What is going on everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Unfiltered Conversations and I am your host, Lila Simone. I am so glad to have you guys back here again today and I wanted to give you guys a few updates before we get started. So now you finally can reach us on Spotify. Just type in Layla Simone, Unfiltered Conversations should be at the top and I'm so excited to finally have another platform for you guys to hear this wonderful conversation that I have prepared for you. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to us and leave a like as well because I need to know that you guys are enjoying these conversations because if not, I'm not going to know what more to post. So let's go ahead and get into it. Today we're going to be talking about politics as a young adult, okay? Why does this matter? Why are we talking about it? I'm talking about it because I'm not going to lie. I am not one that is all into the politics like I'm not gonna lie to you but what I have noticed about my generation is though we may not be tapped in when it affects us oh we tap in for sure we do the research we get nosy we want to know everything so I kind of want to give you guys a short spill of what is coming to us in 2025 and what we're gonna have to be dealing with today because truth be told hopefully I don't burn myself with this tea um literally and physically because this tea is piping hot that I have in my hand and the tea that I'm about to spill is even hotter sorry guys I needed something because otherwise I was gonna cough but let's get into it so first and foremost I want to talk about project 2025 right what even is it because it was brought to my attention on TikTok, which is probably why they want to shut it down but we'll get into that later but project 2025 and i know that a lot of us aren't tapped into politics but this affects a lot of young adults especially in the baby making department but we're going to talk about it okay so project 2025 was implemented by the republican party and it should be um effective january 20th 2025 if said representative wins right so let's go ahead and talk about it because it's not something that i don't think many are familiar with so it says on the website that there are three members um, of the team. Paul Dance, he's the director of Project 2025. The associate director is um, Spencer um, Credian. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm so sorry. Um, and then we have Troop Hemingway, who is also another associate director. So these are all three white men. Please keep this in mind, okay? To basically, in my mind, recruit people to um, get these beliefs and things rolling because I'm not going to lie to you, it gets a little messy. It gets a little messy. So, um, I'm not going to lie. I'm not too fond of what I found because I feel like it directly affects a lot of young people, a lot of black people um a lot of minorities and um i'm gonna give you guys a couple of issues that i had with this overall situation okay okay so one of my issues um with project 2025 is that it recommends that we should abolish the department of education whose programs would either be transferred to other agencies or terminated as a whole why would we get rid of the Department of Education? I feel like um, we're not too woke about what's going on, but guys, they're trying to make sure that us, meaning minority people, are not able to receive an education. They've, um, you know, pushed affirmative action, which is something that we'll talk about later. And this is a big issue okay because i don't feel like 
abolishing the Department of Education would be the wisest thing to do. And if you don't know what the Department of Education is, let's talk about it. So the Department of Education is administered by the U.S. Secretary of Education. It has um, 4,400 employees, the smallest staff of the cabinet agencies, okay? The purpose is to establish policies on federal financial aid for education and distributing as well as monitoring those funds. They also collect data on America's schools and um, disseminating research. So um, basically keeping stats of what's going on in our school programs, um, focusing on national attention on key um, educational issues. So basically addressing those issues that we do find after doing said research um, and prohibiting discrimination and ensuring equal access to ed education. So making sure that general education is available to all without any type of um, sexual, um, religious, or racial discrimination, right? So basically this makes sure that everybody is getting a quality education um, that people are being held to the jobs that they signed up for, that the students are getting what they deserve, and that um, if they don't, that there's some type of disciplinary act to follow. So getting rid of the Department of Education, I feel like is very dangerous because at this point, our children are susceptible to a free-for-all in terms of their education. And I feel like a lot of times people don't understand that, especially being a college student now, your grades do not only reflect on your mental capacity. A lot of times it also has to do with your learning environment. Um, if we get rid of the Department of Education, it will now leave a free for all for what our students will receive in terms of their education, which means that teachers can do the bare minimum. Students are not required to do any extensive amounts of um, enrichment so that they know what they need to know. Um, the school systems are starting to cut out classes that teach certain social skills, um, things that they need in terms of like, you know, financial stability, um, so many things. I'm just, you know, just trying to hop on everything. But essentially, if we get rid of the Department of Education, we're going to be in a big problem, right? Now, my next issue with this is that um, my notes are all over the place. This project urges the government to explicitly reject abortion as health care. So, guys, this project is trying to abolish abortions in all forms of contraception, meaning Plan Bs, etc., if IUDs, you name it. So, why is this such a big issue? I'm not going to lie, I'm 20 years old and a lot of you are in that range of 20 to 30. And if we live in a world without um, any type of emergency contraceptive, um, abortion rights, we're going to be in a lot of issues. That means that if you are pregnant and the child that you are pregnant with has a disability and they will have a short span of life, probably you will be forced to carry out that pregnancy. If this pregnancy is going to kill the mother, you will still be forced to carry out this pregnancy. If you were raped, I'm sorry guys, but if you were raped, you will still be forced to carry out this pregnancy. And I just think that is so evil to try to force someone to carry out something that they didn't intend to happen. And then when you think about, sorry guys, I gotta get my tea. Gotta get my tea. Oh, this is so good. Drink your green tea, guys. I need to get like a stand, but um, when you think about the homeless rate, the amount of um, unemployment that is going on right now, add more kids to the world in a place where you may not be financially stable or you're too young or you're not able to necessarily take care of the life that you brought into this world, we are going to be in a rut, essentially. And I really think this is not you know smart and it's so funny to me because um you guys remember i told you 
the um, people behind this project are all white men. As a woman, this is not good. This is not good at all. This is not good, like at all. This project, another issue I had was um, basically discrimination in the work and school environment can go without any type of legal punishment. Um, and by discrimination, I mean in terms of race, sex, and religious beliefs. So um, when we, remember we were talking about affirmative action. So say I'm applying to USC. I apply to USC and these people basically tell me, hey, Layla, unfortunately, we do not accept your application and that's it. And essentially it's because I'm black, but there's no way that I can um, do anything about it. They can just tell me, hey, you're black. You, you, you can't get the job or hey you're black you don't need to be in our um our school like you know what i'm saying so i'm gonna read to you guys what affirmative action is um so affirmative action also um sometimes called reservations alternative access positive discrimination or positive action in various countries laws and policies refers to a set of policies and practices within a government or organization seeking to benefit marginalized groups aka white people guys they're literally making it legal to be racist again just saying and why do you guys think that all of a sudden TikTok is going in flames if they don't sell? They're trying to make sure that when you guys do get wind of what's going on, there's no way you can share it as quickly as TikTok can spread a single video in a day. Because TikTok makes record breaking numbers when it comes down to videos being dropped and the amount of information that can be spread in a single day is crazy. But what they forget is before we had TikTok, we had Twitter. Before we had Twitter, we had Instagram. And then Instagram became federal, in my opinion, because they started taking y'all's posts down depending on what was being said. Because I definitely remember during COVID, um, the George Floyd situation was going on and everything like that. It was a lot of other situations going on during that time because it was COVID. We was in the rut. We was, I don't know, we was in war. And a lot of things that were coming out were getting deleted and taken down. And I was just like, mm, very convenient. And now we're trying to shut this down as a whole to ensure that none of it hits the fan. And I, I just, I think this is very crazy, right? But we're gonna switch over and we're gonna talk about the shutdown of TikTok because this is a mess. So my question to you guys is, is that do you guys believe that this is to essentially shut down what is to come in the next few months? I personally believe, yes, this is basically to make sure that if any of you do get wise, don't get on here talking about it because we're going to make sure that you don't even get the airtime or the chance to even say what you feel is probably necessary to say. Which is why we're here with Unfiltered Conversations because I'm gonna say it. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it. And one thing about it and two things for sure, I'm not, I'm not, I'm like I said, I'm not usually involved with politics, but in this case and form, we have some big issues on the way and because of my age now, this could really affect me and this is the world that i'm also coming into and that's why i feel that it's so important that we start getting more politically involved or at least slowly waking up and realizing that stuff is going on around us and it does affect us at the end of the day because this is not when it was kindergarten first grade second grade where 
we were listening to politics and we were like, eh. No, this is the world that you're about to continue to grow in your adulthood in. This is the world that you are about to bring your child into. This is the world that we could develop or change if we choose to wake up and realize that it's some corrupt stuff about to happen and we have to do something about it. But I want to talk about the fact that they have a few more months to sell um, TikTok to a U.S. company or else they'll be shut down. And of course, President Biden, I'm not going to lie. <sighs> President Biden is doing his best. That's the best way I'm going to put it. But I just don't like the fact that we have such old representatives um, for our nation. And unfortunately, who knows what his health is looking like. But I feel that he is on some strong medication. And that's why, you know, we catch him on camera falling asleep. We see him stuttering and hugging um, or reaching out for air. And it's nobody in front of him. True bad girl, like who you know live leave a, a good lipstick stain like that. But um I feel that President Biden is he's just old man and they got him on camera saying that um the ban of TikTok is gonna make America safer. And I wanna know what is the definition of safe in his mind because I don't feel that TikTok has been detrimental to America in any other aspect than the fact that now we can't necessarily hide the truth. And that may be problematic for them, most definitely. But it has helped in making sure that, you know, a lot of people learn things. You learn things about, you know, parenting. You learn things about, I don't know, whatever you're into. Fashion, hair, nails. It could be so serious um, as to how to buy a house. Or as silly as how to paint my nails green. Like, it could be so goofy. But TikTok has a really wide range depending on what you are looking for. And I really love that app. And when they say that we're going to make America safer by getting rid of it, I really want to know what safer is. You know what I'm saying? But I want to ask you guys in the comments and um, however, DM, whatever, how does this affect you guys because i have a lot of friends and um people around me that are content creators and they have honestly made a great living out of tiktok and at one point i think during covid 19 i had a huge blow up like huge blow up i mean i went from 316 followers to 21k to this current day because I don't post as much anymore um but the fact that I was able to grow and shut in such a short span of time it was very crazy and honestly I feel that if I continued I would have definitely been one of the people who would have been making a pretty solid living and there's some that you know makes about six figures over the internet between different endorsements and collaborations and now that we're shutting this down we have now shut out a form of um money for people and especially the way that the world is looking right now in terms of jobs there's not many that are open and available at this time. So now we have so many people that will be suffering and filing for unemployment because where is the money? Where is the money? We don't have the money. We don't have the money no more. That That's bad. That's really bad. That's really bad. But um, I want to ask you guys as well, and I'm going to ask myself, like, is there any benefits that you guys recognize of the shutdown? A lot of people say that in terms of 
the children TikTok shutting down might be beneficial because it's a lot of things on the internet that children watch and see without their parents' knowledge and they're introduced to it via TikTok um, and with the abolishing of TikTok, they will no longer have the access that they once had to see some of the things that they shouldn't have been looking at to begin with. And I have an argument for that though, because if TikTok didn't exist, there was still going to be Instagram, there was still going to be YouTube, there was still going to be other social media platforms that children know how to get on. And children now versus children back in the day, these kids know how to do everything. So if you think that one singular app was going to keep your child from being exposed to certain things, you are highly mistaken. And again, I'm a psychology major, um, very much so interested in the child development area of psychology. Um, children from ages zero to four, that is their sponge period. They soak up any and everything they see. And before there was technology, children were cursing before there was any TikTok to show them how to curse. Your mother or your father, meaning their grandparents or you were cursing and saying things around these children and they went to school, got in trouble for it, repeating the things that you said so it's not necessarily just social media because i feel like i was introduced to a lot of things prior to social media i never had instagram facebook vine like all of that stuff i didn't have all of that till later on but i still knew about everything and that was not because of social media at all and then they like to try to like point the finger and blame people for what they put out and talking about what about the children. Everything on the internet is not for the children. It's not. The same way that you wouldn't try to sell a child, um, you wouldn't try to sell a little seven year old a BMW because it doesn't make sense. A child can't drive. If you open the internet for the child knowing that it is the world wide web open for them to see everything you are the one at fault for whatever they soak up that's just what it is and i mean we 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 know how it goes like i'm not gonna lie like some of my kids at my job when sexy red first came on the scene they're talking about pound town just let pound town with my we just took up down yeah not Amy like you know how the song goes they're singing that and they're in the fourth grade and I'm highly 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 sure because I met these parents that they are not aware that their child knows these things my parents I'm not gonna lie my parents didn't know I knew how to cuss the way that I did because you knew when you was around your parents shut that mouth Shut that mouth. Don't say that. And my grandmother was the one that was always saying all the craziness. And she explained to me, Layla, you do not say this. These are grandma words. A.K.A. She the only one that's supposed to be cussing around this joint. And I understood. I understood. But best believe if you had me messed up on that playground... Oh yeah, you was gonna get your, you was gonna get yours, you was gonna get yours. You was definitely gonna get yours. But um, I want to get back on the topic of the TikTok situation because um, with the TikTok shutdown, we also have Trump who was running for president. But the issue is, is that. He was found guilty on all 34 counts. I can't believe that he is still able to run for president and he has 34 counts that he just got hit for. How is that possible? How is he able to do that? And if somebody can explain it to me, please explain it to me in the comments because I'm learning. I'm learning. But this is crazy. 
And it's funny because at one point, he really liked TikTok. He supported TikTok because, I'm not going to lie, during his presidency, half of the stuff that he said online that, you know, made him popular or more popular and allowed people to, you know, hop on his side was because of TikTok. A lot of his crazy clips and the things that he said over time was all posted on TikTok. But now that he's in trouble, 34 counts, he is now... Oh, we need to shut down TikTok. Hmm. Well, 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 well. Very interesting. Very interesting. But I definitely wanted to talk to you guys about Project 2025 because it's so much more that we can dive into because it's like 900 something pages. And I just wanted to talk to the ones, talk about the ones that stood out to me most at this very moment. And um, if you guys want a part two so we can talk more about what Project 2025 will bring, we definitely can do that. I also wanted to let you guys know that my sunglasses brand will be dropping very, very soon. Make sure that you follow us at Lenses by Lay on Instagram for more updates because I have so much coming very soon. Um, I'm going to have a guest on this next episode and I'm so excited. So you guys hold on to Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I'm so, so, so excited. Um, I'm getting tongue-tied, but again, make sure that you guys tap in with me on Spotify. Just type in Layla Simone, Unfiltered Conversations, and episode two is where this will be. I am so glad that you guys joined me on this episode to talk about Project 2025, TikTok, why we need to be involved um, in the community and voting. Um, make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Layla Simone, two E's and an underscore so we can discuss together, DM me topics. And even if you want to jump on the episode, just let me know. I'm so glad that I was able to have this raw and unfiltered conversation with you guys. And I'm your host, Layla Simone.